So today I'll be uh, doing a small, probably about one hour sketch in my sketchbook, like this one. Uh, I'll be doing uh, a sketch in a sketchbook like this. This is a Hanson sketchbook that I um, already have used one of them. Uh, I like it, so I bought another one and I have a new one here. And today I'm going to be drawing a small um, kiosk stall kind of thing that sells food, a really small uh, kind of sketch. And because a lot of you asked, I added this camera here that um, takes my watercolor palette. So you should be more or less able to see what I'm doing with the, with the paints. Yeah, I have a, a the sticker old sketch. <coughs> Sorry. So let's get to it. And I'll be using today uh, my mechanical pencil. Alami pen, fountain pen, and my watercolors and brushes. Okay, first let's make the sketch. This is just a quick sketch based on a photo I found on the internet somewhere, so um, not a photo that I took. So let's start sketching. It's 9 p.m. here. If you have something you want to talk about, uh, ask in the chat because I have the chat live, live chat. The rule. I first do, I will do a really rough of tape so I can know what I'm doing. The filter on the microphone a little bit too. Is it better? Probably. One? Okay. Um, I'm putting a anti-noise filter on the microphone because my laptop is really next to the uh, microphone so you will probably hear a little bit of noise from the laptop because it's getting hot while streaming but um, yeah I have to still get the settings of the filter right so it filters out only the noise and not when i'm saying something i'm i'm not doing inktober this year because i have a bigger project coming that i will have to uh, focus on and uh, i also started doing this uh, arakawa train line illustration S probably and because i like the first one uh, i probably will do a series of them so i want to focus kind of on that i would like to spend some time to learn inking better but um, yeah it looks like this year again i'm kind of out of luck if it comes to time in ink in october for inktober but Kana is doing Inktober, so you can follow her on uh, Instagram because she's uploading a nice uh, ink illustration every day. Os. Yes, so she's actually doing the next one right now. Os. I'm doing a, a, how do you call it? A stall, so a small kind of kiosk thing, because I like the shape of it. And this one actually sells Midarashi dango. Midarashi dango. Which I don't know what it is. Probably I ate it, but I don't remember the name, so. Midarashi? Midarashi? 
みたらし団子ってなんでなんだろう It's dango, so I think it's kind of a dumpling thing. This, this shape of this is more complicated than I expected. I have been living in Japan for eight years, more than eight years already. Uh, did you experience some cultural sh shock?、Um, Yes, but not probably from the reasons that、um, everyone kind of thinks about at first. Because I had a, a, a cultural shock because I could not speak Japanese at all. So、um, it was a kind of a shock for me because、um, I kind of like talking, I like to speak to people, I like to. Kind of、um, express myself with, with talking. I worked as a not teacher but kind of presenter in, in Poland.、Uh, so it was a, a, a kind of a shock for me. This is really difficult actually. So it was a kind of a shock for me to come to a country that you, I cannot say anything、uh, that is more difficult than、uh, I won't eat. Uh, for the first like two months, so. So, <laughs> 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 なるほど。カナは、私たちに言ってくれたら、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、Took the name from the river that comes that goes there, and so、um, the first Mitarashi Dango burn, born, was born. That's difficult. Okay, so this, this stall has the most peculiar roof. I like、uh, I like the roof, yes, but it's kind of difficult to do.、Uh, okay. And this has like a. Hmm. I still hear like Gaijin or Gaikokujin, but、um, it helps to know the language. So if you know how to speak Japanese, you can break many barriers. Uh, mostly because some of the、mm, not, not fear but not accept, unacceptance comes from、uh, Japanese people not knowing、uh, English, so they are kind of afraid that、uh, they will do something that puts them in an、uh, uncomfortable position. So、um, they get really、uh, kind of relaxed when they know that you can speak Japanese. Suddenly, everyone is like, ah,、oh, okay, you can speak Japanese. So, that's a great advantage to have. Okay, so there's like a pipe here, and there's like a, I think,、um, poster here, small poster, and the pipe goes down. And there's the frame, and it's not so long, like here. There's like a. It's just a photo I, I picked up、uh, on the internet somewhere. So I, it's just a, like a. What I'm doing now is just like a study so、uh, I can kind of remember how this small stall looks like so I can use it somewhere、uh, in some of my 
works when I kind of digest it and and draw it once so I'll just kind of be able to remember this is a uh, Kohinoor Mephisto uh, Profi which I bought in Prague uh, when we went this year with Kana and I actually have all my tools on my website listed and also this pencil there so if you want to check what I'm using for my paintings and drawings just go to my website and there's like a uh, tools frequently asked questions section and there's a whole long list of stuff that I use and I update it really often so go check it out it's nice pencil because um, it has the eraser on the end so I often when I want to just erase a really small detail I just go like mm, and okay so it's also nice to use like uh, outside or in a train or something so you don't have to uh, juggle with two tools I did not study academic drawing or painting uh, no this is really hard to kind of get correctly okay, so this has like a pom 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 ポンポンはなんかこういう帽子についてるなんかふわふわのいやなんかちょうちんがあってでちょうちんになんか小さい赤いポンポンがついてるみたいな。Hi fro to everyone that um, could join us today here. Okay, so there really is a person that's buying some something here, so I cannot see how things look here, but I'll just have to kind of wing it and. Um, okay, so that's the front it has like a part like this here which is weird but whatever and the whole construction is is really weird Uh, yeah, I'm going to color this <laughs> if I if nothing happens on the way, but yeah. One, two, three, four. I don't have this part here on the photo so you just have to kind of extrapolate how it could look there's like a small roof here and it ends like let's say it ends like this The previous typhoon did uh, kind of a little bit of damage, not so much, 
here the the wind was really strong it did not rain so much but uh, the wind was really really strong and uh, the house shook a lot uh, but the only thing that happened is that my and Kana's bicycles were like thrown all over the uh, like parking lot that we have and um, they were covered in like rain covers so the rain covers worked like um, how do you call it sails ship sails so they were the, the bicycles were dragged through the um, through the backyard and the garden and everywhere like so when I uh, came out of the house the next day they were kind of in the garden so not our garden garden <laughs> by the way so okay and there are shoes of the person who sells in this shop like outside here which is a really nice cute detail so i'll paint it okay so that's more or less like this I think that th this should be longer. Okay. Okay, let's go for the line work. Ta -da. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, I have a project. Um, uh, he's asking, or she's asking. I don't know. Oscar. Okay, so he he's asking um do i have any projects currently and uh, like a book or something and i'm actually currently negotiating a book kind of thing but it's still not 100 percent decided so i cannot say what it is but um so you will not be disappointed if it goes like but uh, yeah if everything goes well um I will be working on this for the next few months. <sighs> okay, and there is like a... Okay, we'll try to paint it with watercolors, but... Hmm. <sighs> okay, I'll think about it when I go to the watercolors. Okay, so the next step is uh, lines with this pen. This is a... Uh, Lamy Safari pen uh, that I bought recently just to try if I can put a nice ink inside so I can paint over it with watercolors and I actually find, found really nice blue ink blue and blue black inks from uh, Sailor that work kind of okay i did uh, painting in gouache and i did painting uh, uh, paintings in um, acrylic gouache which i prefer actually the difference between gouache and acrylic gouache is that um, acrylic gouache is waterproof when dry so um, when you paint one layer and then you want to paint over it uh, with gouache you have to be kind of careful so you um, do not disturb the layer that you already did especially when you paint like with white for example on something that you already painted with dark color you can sometimes 
kind of disturb the uh, thing that you already did and it can it gets kind of dirty but with acrylic gouache uh, it's waterproof so you can do whatever you want with the layers and um, everything will stay in place and i really like it because it kind of uh, reminds me of painting digitally so you have uh, this kind of freedom of i don't have to think about the layers i don't have to think about anything i just can paint from start from whatever i want and just go wherever i want with my colors Of course, the best result is when you paint just with least layers and least over painting, painting over as possible. This is really nice bluing. It's uh, it's called Seiboku, and it's made by Sailor, and it's waterproof pigment ink. And if you saw my um, latest Arakawa line illustration, uh, this is what I was using for the line work there. Okay, so the reason why I'm using a fountain pen is um, I like multi liners, like the just. 0.5 multi-liner from Copic uh, or whatever but um, the problem with multi-liners is that you have just uh, black there are some gray ones but they are not really nice and um, there are some blue ones but they are not really nice the color is really like garish so you don't have any choice of ink really but uh, with a fountain pen you have the advantage that you have the ability to put um, any waterproof ink that you like so you can put like noodler's ink or diatramentis or whatever black ink you want or you can just experiment and use other colors also which is nice so um, i was using a fountain pen for my line work a long 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 time even when i was still in poland Uh, but um, yeah, I also like other tools like the uh, rotring rapidographs or uh, multiliners. It just depends what I'm want wanting to do uh, with the picture. If I uh, ha want to have the lines as black as I can, I will use a rapidograph. Uh, if I want a more kind of variation in the line I will use a, a multi-liner or um, a fountain pen so for example I can take like a nice blue black ink and put it in the fountain pen and it's waterproof so I can use it uh, with my watercolors but I also can write my uh, memos with it I can also have with it have it with me wherever I go um, I can refill it so it's kind of um, economic also so yeah it has a lot of advantages and also because um, you can do a little bit of um, like variation in the line when you press harder Uh, I'm not an extreme Ghibli fan. Uh, I know that some people buy a lot of the cells, original cells and stuff like that. Uh, if someone gave it, gave one to me, I, I would be really happy. Uh, but yeah, when I go to the Ghibli museum and see the prices on the on the on the celluloids, I'm like, mm, no, I'll just buy a poster or a sticker. 
Um, tell me when they when they cost a little bit less, maybe. So no, I'm not like a like really hardcore uh, collectioner, but um, I'm more into the content than the the things. I have the books because uh, we use it a lot as reference, uh, and I hold of, and I have the most of the Blu-rays because I watch them uh, from time to time and also as reference. So, um, I have some of the stuff, but uh, it's not like I'm collecting everything. I actually uh, got some books for free from my uh, university, from Studio Ghibli stuff, but um, I was like, I don't actually need those books, so I sold them. So I only have the books that I uh, use as reference and just for inspiration. Where is my favorite place to paint outside? Mm. I like to paint outside, but I also like it to be kind of comfortable because I want to kind of uh, spend as much time as I want um, on a painting so I don't have to be like really pressured by time or uh, so there is like nowhere to sit or there's nowhere to uh, kind of refill your water bottle or to go to the toilet. So um, I really like to uh, paint in Japanese gardens because most of the time they have like uh, public facilities that you can use like uh, sinks and kind of wash places that you can wash your stuff and uh, they have a bathroom so you can refill your water and use it. And most of the times they're okay with watercolor painting and most of the times they have like benches and stuff so you can sit if you uh, are lucky in a nice place. So uh, yeah, I like Japanese gardens and there's not so many people in them so yeah. Um, but there are also other places that are like, for example, there's like um, in Minowabashi, so next to Akihabara, there's like a uh, kind of shopping center that was rem remodeled from an old train station and um, it has like a terrace and it's a really nice spot because you can see the bridge that's in Ochanomizu and you can see a little bit of Akihabara so uh, if you go there you can kind of sketch a few things but um, the place is kind of okay with you sketching and having tripods and stuff on the balcony and they have a toilet and if it rains you can go inside and there's also a nice restaurant and some things to see inside also like a miniature of um, old Tokyo and all kinds of stuff and you can go there for free so it's a really nice place for kind of sketching and uh, enjoying Tokyo. It's a M nib. I don't know if it's a flex or or not. It's the um, usual M nib. I I don't think it has any uh, flex in it so much. Uh, okay, so uh, okay, I'll put it a little bit lower. Anna is doing Inktober and she's doing weird poses to check if she's doing the right pose with her characters.
this is too small to letter it so I'll just do it with ink Uh, so it would the the letters should be white on dark backgrounds, but it would took uh, too long to do it with uh, masking fluid. So I'll just do it with ink. I'm trying to kind of follow the style of the letters from the original text. And there's like a poster here, some text in it, and there's some text here. Uh, the Susume Carolina is finished because it's uh, only uh, like a short movie, the one that you can see on, on YouTube. This is a promotional movie for um, uh, a line of kind of energy bar kind of food uh, and also uh, a kind of promotional movie for the first female uh, foreign shogi player. Uh, which is Karolina Karolina Stycińska. And because the professional shogi, so Japanese chess chess players can eat during the matches, uh, the maker of the energy bars decided to kind of sponsor her career professional career so um, they wanted to make an animation in which like she eats the energy bars while doing chess so yeah <sighs> wait I'll kind of dry this I use a lot of sketchbooks. I have a ton of sketchbooks. I have too many sketchbooks probably. I have some moleskins that I use for like memo taking and uh, uh, doing like sketches on the go if they don't have to be like really nice. Uh, I have this canson sketchbook that I'm using right now. And I like it because it has a nice, it has nice paper and um, it's kind of opening flat because it doesn't have the stiff back and um, it has a magnetic clasp that I hate and I cut on all the console sketchbooks that I have because it always goes over the drawing. But it has a nice, um, like really stiff, nice cover and it's kind of sturdy so it's good for taking somewhere and sketching and it also can take light watercolors even though the paper is not so thick so okay this looks nice okay so let's go the with the watercolors okay i have to take my test paper from here okay hello So I always use like a test piece of paper for my uh, coloring so I know what I'm doing. Let's see. Camera, okay. A little bit here have the chat open so I cannot see the having a laptop is good because I can put it here on the desk but uh, it also has a small screen okay I will use a bigish kind of a brush because I don't want to make it too detailed but um, probably even though I use this small brush I will make it too detailed but whatever let's try maybe a little bit smaller one this is number 10 <clears throat> 
uh, Raphael Soft Aqua Brush. Okay, Ultramarine. Uh, we will go with Ultramarine for like this part of the roof here. I want to leave some uh, white of the paper in this sketch. Mm, the best place to get reference without uh, your camera mm, I would say like the uh, I don't know if I if I can get it right but it's like the 500 pixels website has nice photos and just Google but you can also go for Google Street View and just look for some interesting places that's good because no one will tell you, okay, uh, you used my photo as a reference and just pay me a lot of money. And, uh, yeah. But, um, it, it differs what you use the photos for and what photos you are looking for. No, oh, I forget the I forgot this part here. Uh, it's added fast. This ink is kind of strange because when I when I use it, it's more like a uh, kind of helio turquoise color. Uh, but it, when it dries, it becomes more kind of rusty color, uh, like mountain blue or something like that. So it's nice. It has a nice kind of life of itself. Um, okay, so mother brown. I will use a little bit of mother brown and mix it with the ultramarine. I lately really like this mix. And I use it on the roof. Hello. more ultramarine, more mother brown. Mother brown is a really nice color from Schminke because it's kind of trans transparent, translucent, so uh, it's not opaque color and it mixes really well and um, with blues, especially blues like ultramarine or mountain blue, uh, it makes really nice neutral kind of grayish tones with those colors which are um, really nice to use like um, for shading I really recommend those uh, this color it's number 670 and you can see the full list of the colors that I usually use on my website now this is a uh, sailor uh, Seibok ink which is more or less waterproof they say it's water resistant, but um, it's actually kind of really uh, waterproofy. I didn't have any problems with it so far, but I'm still kind of in the testing phase. <clears throat> ah, it's you. Okay. Hi. By the way, I will um, later scan this sketch and upload it for my uh, patrons, patron supporters on uh, on Patreon in uh, quite nice resolution. Yeah, I, uh, I'm adding characters, especially uh, in the next kind of series or something that I'm doing with the uh, train line right now, the Arakawa line. Uh, I will be doing characters in all the illustrations because this is also one of the things I want to uh, learn more like designing characters but also like making a lot of different characters 
So not only like um, people that I want to paint uh, and draw, but also like random people and some kind of uh, just interesting passers-by or something. I want to kind of mm, develop my style of character drawing so I have more kind of uh, distinctive style that you can say, oh, it's like him or something. I also want to get better because I can do some kind of characters but not all kind of, the, of them so I have my favorites that I will just do without thinking but um, to do a different person or more interesting that's kind of difficult still so um, yeah I want to train And also I want to do a comic, I, I need a, a nice good uh, new idea, uh, <clears throat> like everyone is doing Inktober and I would also like to do something with, with ink, <clears throat> sorry. it a little bit darker would I wake uh, would I work with another artist um, probably yes um, it depends on the speciality of the artist. Uh, for example, on animation, I often work with other artists because uh, artists because um, they're just better than me in animation. So they do the characters and I do the backgrounds or I do the storyboard and they animate it or uh, they do the character design for me and I just use it for the storyboard. So um, I'm kind of used to it. Uh, but if someone was like the same kind of category um, then I kind of do not really see why I should collaborate uh, so yeah probably if the person was a different category artist then yes why not like for example we do something something with Kana also like she does the uh, animation of the people who eat food and I uh, help her with the backgrounds for that or I do a background and she does the characters for like uh, my illustration so yeah <clears throat> sorry for the voice I probably would also consider doing like a comic for example if someone wrote a story that I liked I actually had like an offer for something like that but it already had like characters so I could not do characters with my own style and I was like mm, I won't do it so um, if I had just the right kind of story I would probably consider doing it are you doodling in trains planes cars in cars no because i get uh, car sick uh, in trains yes sometimes in plane in planes uh no i watch stupid movies because I'm kind of too stressed and I kind of um, cannot um, concentrate. In trains, yes, I, I doodle from time to time. Uh, for example, this is the Moleskin that I usually use for like memo and stuff. So I did like this kind of sketch in, on train recently. 
So these are the things I kind of make from time to time. But most of the times I kind of uh, looking at people and uh, I try to kind of observe the surroundings. It kind of gives a lot of nice inspiration. I really like to look at the buildings from the train. You can see a lot of kind of um, details that you cannot usually see from ground level because usually in Japan the trains are, are uh, kind of on an elevation of a type. So you can see like the roofs or like weird um, the back of the buildings sometimes. So the so the face that is not like usually visible from the street or something. So that's also interesting. Let me dry this out, sorry. Are you planning working as an animator? No, because uh, I uh, never was an animator. Because an animator is a person that animates the uh, characters. Uh, I was um, a background painter and sometimes a uh, director because I did like <coughs> storyboards and direction. So uh, I did not um, kind of work as an animator and uh, for me it's too hard i'm not so fluent in doing like characters and all kind of crazy poses and motions and um, i did not learn animating so um all everything i animate is actually done only on kind of my uh try and fail and try again kind of method so uh, i wouldn't be efficient enough to work in Japanese animation industry as an animator. I can do backgrounds and I do sometimes uh, but um, I try to concentrate on my own work right now because I can and I and want and I want to so yeah. Maybe uh, if I have a chance to do an animation that's based up, uh, on my kind of story or on my, uh, I don't know, comic or something, then yes, obviously, uh, not necessarily as a um, director, but maybe like a showrunner or just a creator or whatever. But yeah, if I had a chance like this, of course, I would try to um, participate. Uh, let's use a little bit of Van Dyke Brown because I like the name Van Dyke. No, actually, I wanted this color here. So, um, f as for now, I was using only Mother Brown, Neutral Tint, and uh, Ultramarine mostly those three colors for this i uh, yeah i could provide my characters uh, to the animator and i actually did the, did that uh, for example the animation on Ka carolina i did the basic character design character design for for that uh, it's just my characters are not really japanese animation style so they're kind of hard for the animators to move so most of the times they end up making something that's in between uh, Japanese animation style and my style, which is kind of mm, because I would really like to have uh, more control over that. But uh, most of the time they are like 
no we cannot do a character like that because um yeah just we are not used to painting stuff like this and because they are not used uh, to to something to, to a character design like this um the movement kind of looks unnatural and stiff so most of the times we go for the kind of Japanese animation character design thing or uh, or at least close to it it's like you would um, try to get uh, I don't know a Disney animator doing anime uh, style drawings so that would not work probably <laughs> I'm using an image reference really um, loosely but it's just a photo I kind of uh, picked from the internet from somewhere I don't even remember from where Uh, I'm using a Canon scanner that's ca that's called uh, Canon Scan 9000F Mark II, and um, it's really nice. Though it's only A4, so uh, for most of my paintings, I have to scan them in parts and then put them together in Photoshop, which is bothersome, but. Uh, it makes really nice sharp sketches, uh, sharp scans, and um, they have really nice colors. So, yeah. I would like to have a bigger scanner, but they are only made from I know, for the, what I know, from 419, for what I know, yes. For what I know, um, they are only made by Epson and they're enormously expensive. So, yeah, and I really don't like Epson recently, so, no. Uh. Thank you. Uh, we did a lot of experimenting on the Caroline animation. Uh, like I did watercolor backgrounds, which, which is not really a thing that you do on Japanese animation. And uh, Studio Colorid also did some um, nice experimenting with the characters. Some of the animation it was done like uh, using AI software support, AI support software or whatever. Um, to, to do the in-between animation and all kinds of magic was happening like uh, and I didn't even know about it so uh, yeah it was a nice kind of um, project small enough uh, for us to kind of try to do a lot of things that we would not usually do on, on bigger works. Probably the biggest painting I did so far uh, was actually in the Carolina animation. If you look at the, I think, second cut of the animation, there's like a camera pan from a city to a cafe. And that was huge. 
that was probably the biggest uh, watercolor painting I did so far. Let's add some little bit ultramarine here and this part here is metal so I'm trying to do like this kind of metallic reflection and let's use a little bit of raw sienna and we will mix it make it a little bit darker with Van Dyke brown uh, yes, maybe I'll make it a little bit redder using Caput Mortum. Caput Mortum. Caput Mortum. I usually tend to mix maximally two colors, but yeah. Sometimes it's really hard to do a color, even though I have a lot of colors in the palette, as you can see, sometimes it's really hard to get the color that I want, so I have to mix more colors. Okay, I'll have to mix this color a little bit more to make it more intensive here. Uh, Van Dyke Brown and a little bit of Caput Mort. A little bit too dark, yeah. yeah. Do I prefer Holbein or Schminke? I use Schminke for all my paintings, like paintings that I do like professionally or uh, just like now, but um, I use Holbein in all my portable sets and uh, I like it actually the only color from Schminke that I don't like is uh, Prussian blue which is not really good um, it dries uh, really hard and um, cracks and it's hard to use so I actually have uh, the Holbein Prussian blue in my set here so um, yeah, that's the one color from Schminke that I don't like. But you need to have a Prussian blue in your set. So um, there's a lot of colors from Schminke. So I could probably buy a color that's really close to Prussian blue and it's behaving better. But um, I actually like the Prussian blue from Hol Holbein. So I put it in my uh, main set. But uh, all the sets that I have for outside painting, like the ones in the metal palettes that you can see in some of, of my videos, are from Holbein. I like the paints because they are kind of cheaper and are good quality and I never had any problems with them and um, they are kind of consistent and um, they mix really well I don't they they don't get too hard or too soft so yeah i can recommend them no problem i uh, have tried kuretake gansai tampi watercolors which i actually have one video on I think on my channel and um, they are interesting paints uh, I like the painting that I did with them uh, but they have some problems that um, do not allow me to use them in professional capacity uh, mostly because um, they are not really well balanced so um, if you buy for example a standard uh, set 
of 12 colors I think I had like a sample set uh, it's really hard to do color that is not kind of violetish looking so um, when in with Schminke like uh, you I can do that this set is kind of neutral so I can do whatever um, pastel colors or bluish colors or reddish colors or violetish colors. I have a lot of colors. I can mix them and it's okay. But uh, with the Gansai Tambi set, even that I, though I tried to uh, get out of this kind of violetish kind of look, uh, I could not. It was okay for the painting I did because I did like a natural painting with lots of like grass and stuff. Uh, but um, yeah, some colors are were very weak and some colors were very strong and I could not balance the picture as I wanted. It came out okay, uh, so it's probably okay for some sketching or outdoor painting or whatever. But um, the set that I had uh, was really not balanced well. And also um, the problem with those uh, watercolors is that some of the colors are um, they kind of have a sheen to them. So after you paint, if you look at certain angle, they shine like um, some types of ink or like you would uh, have with a pencil that you look like from the side and it's kind of not exactly black just a kind of gray shiny uh, kind of thing so especially with the darker tones I tried to mix some colors to get some nice dark tones and all of them kind of shine they are not matte completely uh, so that also is kind of mm, it's like painting with acrylics a little bit Weird, <laughs> in one word, a little bit weird. They're nice for like um, really saturated and um, uh, I didn't have any problems with, with them as like I couldn't use them now, it's like okay. But um, they have a strong, uh, a Japanese person would say kse, so like a strong character that is really hard to fight sometimes. If you go with it, they're okay. But if you want to paint something different, they won't let you. I'll add some blue here. Ah, it's not colored pencil, it's... Uh, a fountain pen with blue ink or do you can you draw like that with ah okay uh, no uh, I I had not tried uh, colored uh, colored pencil to do a, a, a drawing like this I guess if if it was kind of simple and I didn't have to do so much like blending and uh, and nice and like transitions I think I could do it most of the skills that you have in uh, painting and like color choosing and stuff you can transfer to other media like um, if you see um, the painting I did with Copic markers I used all, almost all the same kind of knowledge of colors with the Copic markers so um, it's really possible to kind of transfer your your knowledge to other uh, media. Okay, I'll do a nice shadow here. I don't know if it will be nice. Let's let's hope it will be nice shadow. Mm, kind of like this. Okay. Maybe a little bit more intensive. I'm trying to make it the same shape as the uh, Noren, so the curtain. 
This paper is okay, but the problem is that if you paint layer over layer, the, the, the lower layer would get blurred uh, no, no matter what you do. So um, I'm trying not to layer the paint too much on this painting. Okay, I'll dry this. Yeah, I have recently discovered that I have a mute button on the on the mic which will help in situations like when I have to dry something. So yes. Okay. By the way, I'm using a sure brand like desktop mic and I like it because it's a USB mic and I can use it also on my iPad and iPhone and it's not so expensive and it has a nice quality I use it on all my videos recently so yeah nice mic Uh, the music is done by uh, the guy who uh, I usually use for all my videos, who is called Scott Buckley. And he's actually like, uh, I think, geo geologist, geologist or some, someone like this. And he's doing a PhD in like really advanced geology, but he also makes music. And you can download all the music that he does uh, on his website. And it's a Creative Commons music, so you can use it uh, in your videos and stuff. And he also has a Patreon, so if you want, you can support him. And he's an awesome guy, so yeah. I uh, do not blend photos and pictures together, uh, just because... Um, in pictures you kind of choose what you're doing and in your kind of design process you decide the angle of the camera and what goes where the size of things and everything but in photos you uh, you move with the camera and um, you can only like observe what is already there and decide the angle and stuff. So most of the times when I paint, I do not follow the shape of things exactly as they are uh, in the photo. I kind of pick and choose and uh, adjust my angles and do the stuff the, the way I want. Uh, so it would be really kind of hard and unwieldy for me to do any like, um, I don't know, photo bashing or something. Okay. This kind of looks okay. I will take a little bit smaller brush and do the things here, but first I will dry the painting.
The only upcoming bigger project that I have is still kind of secret. Uh, I will be probably uh, able to speak about it soon. Uh, it's just because I'm kind of still negotiating it and uh, it's kind of a... Uh, uh, how do you call it? Still, it does not have the green kind of publishing light, but uh, when it does, uh, I will tell more about it and I'll probably do, be doing videos while I uh, paint it and do stuff but I did some uh, commissions I do not usually take commissions but I did like a one commission with two illustrations and uh, I will be also posting that on the internet soon when it's out in the wild I usually take only uh, commissions that I can show you and make a uh, make a video and show you the process behind it Okay. I need more reddish color here. So a little bit of caput mortem and Like this. Okay, so I'll just paint the insides and I want to make the top of this uh, part here a little bit darker. So let's do that first, maybe. Some English Venetian brown. I don't know why the Venetian Venetian brown is English, but well, probably the pigment was made in England or something like that. The story uh, behind some of the uh, color names are really nice. I do uh, draw people but most of the times when I draw people they are kind of turned into my characters I'm really bad at um, keeping the likeness so I cannot do like um, what do you call it portraits I'm really bad at this most of the times when I do a portrait it does not whatsoever look like the person on the on the portrait it's really weird because i can do a really nice car that looks like itself but i cannot do a person so it looks like the person it should not be so different like a person in a car but yeah i don't know Yeah, an old li library would be awesome. Yeah, I guess I, I just cannot get the proportions right, probably. I don't know. Um, they just look kind of okay, but at the same time kind of weird. So, uh, yeah, I just like to turn them into my characters and uh, 
uh, like the ones I, I have in the comic Yuragi or uh, in the recent view illustration that I uploaded yesterday. So they usually end up looking like kind of these weird characters, but yes. Okay. Let's do the slippers. It's kind of Van Dyke brown, but kind of diluted, maybe. Okay. I want to add some things here to just suggest that there's something behind this glass here. Come back to me. Let's try to hit the Okay. I don't know what the uh, insides of the shop looks like exactly because there's a person here on the on the photo so I'll just try to paint something that looks like it hot it's actually set to turbo In a painting like this, like a sketch, I don't really care about uh, like spilling the uh, pigment in a weird direction or something like that. But uh, when I do like a big uh, painting that I really care about, then I am kind of careful with the hair dryer because if you um, use it in a weird way, it can push the pigment and make a nice for example, gra gradient or something like that um, look really weird and, 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 and dirty. So uh, I kind of use it here and I used it for a lot of paintings. So I kind of know what it will do. Uh, but yeah, I still I'm kind of wary about uh, it. So uh, you have to be careful with it, especially if you use a lot of, a lot of water in your painting, then it can kind of push stuff around and make weird things happen. It also depends on the paper you use. Some papers uh, bind the uh, pigment really fast and uh, it doesn't really move. Uh, but some papers can be like uh, really, really wet for a long time. You know, there's something here. Okay. And this part of the basket is darker. Okay. And there's like a red thing here, but I'll wait for the basket to dry and let's do the shadow of the building on the ground. Uh, okay. Palette change. I have a smaller one. Okay, let's make a shadow, so ultramarine and a little bit of mother brown, probably like this. A little bit more. Okay, I don't want to make it too dark, okay, so I'm painted kind of here. Painting a shadow like this can help to set kind of your thing that you're drawing on the ground. I 
I follow a lot of people on... Wait a second. I follow a lot of people on Instagram. I don't know, Do you, can you see the person that I... See the people that I follow? Probably you can. If you go there, you will find a lot of people that I like and I follow. I mostly follow only the people I like. Uh, I will use a white gel pen for some details here. And there's like a, a wire here that I want to add. And let's go. Roof here. I use it sometimes on like small details, especially on sketches like this. It's nice to add some like uh, small things. not overdo it maybe I'll just add some things here so you can see that there is something here in the back it's a little bit too bright I'll fight it a little bit back with water okay and, uh, and let's act, add the red accents and I think we'll be done with this Intensive red. This is permanent carmine. It's like a pink, pinkish red. Yeah, nice. Okay, and there's like a thing here, and the logo on the is red. Let's add some red accents here to the text, maybe. And let's dilute it a little bit and add some little bit red here and here in the in the store so there are some red accents in some other places. Okay, and a little bit of the sh of a shadow here and I think we are done. No, I did not uh, learn Japanese by myself. I uh, when I came to Japan, I was taught Japanese for I think like four months in an intensive uh, Japanese learning experience for foreign students before I went to study the thing I was meant to study, so animation and, and comics. It was at um, a different university. I went to the Kobe University for, for that. There's like a um, international student center there, there and they taught the all the students that came uh, the same using the same scholarship as I did at that center. So yeah. Okay, I think we are done. Okay, can zoom a little bit more probably, so you can see a little bit more details. I really, really like this part because it's nice and sketchy, I like the red accents, uh, 
I wish I did the letters with white as they originally are in the in the photo but it was too bothersome for a sketch like this yeah, a little bit more shadow here see when you leave me like this I'll just fix stuff that's not good okay um, let's finish this and um, thank you for coming I will probably scan and upload this to my Tumblr and upload this in better quality for my Patreon supporters. So um, if you are on Patreon, just look for it later. And that's it. Thank you very much for coming and thank you for listening to me rambling around and answering your questions really badly. But um, thank you for coming and see you in the next one. Thank you. That's it. See you in the next video.